The reviews are in for the Ryzen 5600X, and it's a pretty good gaming CPU. But what other parts do you need in order to get the best performance? What about overclocking it? If you're gonna overclock it, what kind of cooling do you need? What about memory speed and latency? What's best for gaming? We're gonna go over all of this and get you the best Ryzen 5600X gaming PC on the market. Coming right up. Hi, welcome to PC Builder. I'm Jason. It's both an exciting and frustrating time to be building gaming PCs right now. The Ryzen 5000 series reviews are in and one thing seems absolutely certain. The 5600X is an excellent gaming CPU which competes at the highest levels of performance. So today, we're gonna walk through the entire build and answer all the important questions so that you can get the best price to performance in your new gaming PC. Now, if you haven't seen our Ryzen 5000 coverage, we've done videos on the best motherboards for Ryzen 5000, the best coolers for Ryzen 5000. I'm gonna take and put those up here in the card over here so you can watch them for more in-depth information. Now, remember, we're still a new channel, so if you wanna keep getting this kind of condensed information to give you the best price to performance in your builds, please like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon. It's free to you, and it really makes a difference in supporting the channel and this kind of content. Let's jump into it. Let's start off our discussion by why are you buying the 5600X in the first place over the Ryzen 5 3600? After all, the 5600X costs a full $100 more and the 3600 is a pretty capable gaming chip right now. So let's talk about what the dividing line is. If you are gonna get a low-end graphics card like a 1650 Super or a 1660 Super, even up to the mid-range, the Ryzen 5 3600 is plenty of performance for you and I would urge you to take that $100 difference and dump it into a better graphics card. That is, up until you get to about either a 2060, which I wouldn't wanna buy right now, or a or, or a Radeon RX 5600 XT. That's kind of the dividing line. And really, I would think about anything uh, 3070 or uh, the AMD variant that's, that's coming out soon, which is the RX 6800. Anything that or above, that's really where you wanna live with the 5600 XT. The reason is the 5600 XT is gonna give you uplift in those scenarios. You're gonna get more FPS, whereas even though it's faster than the 3600, the 3600 is already getting most of the FPS from the, the lower tier graphics cards. The other thing you really wanna think about in terms of the dividing line is, what else are you gonna do with the computer? If you're gonna video edit it with it, if you're gonna jump into Premiere, it's actually the 5600X is actually a very, very capable uh, workload processor. If you compare it just, just workload for workload with a 3700X, it actually compares pretty favorably in most of those tests. 37X was a little faster in most of them, a lot faster in a couple of them, but video editing, things of that nature, I would definitely go with the 5600X as, as your processor if you're primarily gaming and also doing that kind of stuff on the side. And honestly, for anything lower than that, 3600 is great, but you could even look at the Ryzen 3 3100 if you're just building a cheap gaming machine. You don't need a 5600X for that. Let's talk about whether or not it makes sense for you to actually manually overclock your Ryzen 5600X. Now from the testing I've seen thus far, frankly, Precision Boost Overdrive is beating the manual overclocks more often than not. Not all the time, but enough that I don't really think it makes a lot of sense for you to go out and get just an absolute ton of cooling in order to guarantee a 4.7 or 4.8 gigahertz all core overclock. Now that's what I'm seeing so far. People are achieving that with typically a 240 millimeter or higher liquid all-in-one cooler or a high-end air cooler. I don't really see why you would invest that much money to get what is effectively between three and 7% in these games. I would recommend we just get a really strong budget or mid-range cooler for it. Again, if you haven't seen my video on best coolers for Ryzen, I did a budget and mid-range video, and then I did a part two that was high-end and liquid coolers. I'm gonna put that up in the card right here. You can check that out, and we're gonna go through that in the build, but ultimately, I would replace the Ray Stealth stock cooler 
If you're really hurting for cash for some reason, you don't have to. I would, I think that makes a lot of sense for about 20 to $30. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to invest, you know, 80 to $100 when we can find uplift in other areas. Number one thing I keep getting asked, which is memory. What speed, what cast latency, how much memory do you need? For Ryzen 5 5600X gaming builds, you only need a minimum of 16 gigabytes of memory. You can get more if you like to have a bunch of stuff open or running at the same time, I would recommend 32, but you only need 16. Now, from the testing I've seen, the memory latency has a much bigger impact than the speed. So I'm recommending these kinds of kits that you see right here, a 3600 speed, cast latency 16 kit, two by eight gigabytes for 16 gigabytes total. Now this memory is gonna run you about $15 more than if you went up to a cast latency of say 18, but to me that money is really, really well spent. So again, this is a kit I recommend. There is testing now that shows that having four sticks of memory does have some small performance boost over having two sticks of memory. Because four gigabyte sticks are pretty much gone off the market, you can't really do that with a 16 gigabytes total. But if you're gonna get 32 gigabytes, consider getting four sticks of eight gigabytes. Get two of the same kit. Remember, always get the same kit. Okay, so let's go through the performance of this specific build. I really think this is one of the best price to performance builds you're gonna get for a Ryzen 5600X, $1,300. I've actually left about 40 or 50 bucks of wiggle room in here if you wanna get some different parts than what I'm gonna show you. So I've included in here $300 for the processor, do not be buying stuff from scalpers. Don't make it worse. Just be patient. I've also included $550 in this build for your eventual graphics card. And we're targeting again, I know they're not available right now, I know it's a meme, but we're targeting the NVIDIA RTX 3070 or the AMD 6, RX 6800. That's your target graphics card for this. In terms of the performance you're gonna get out of it, to me though, this is a really a 1440p build. Uh, I would get a 1440p high refresh rate monitor. Make sure you have the right monitor. Don't spend all this money and then try and play it with a 60 hertz monitor at 1080p. You're just wasting your money. You're not getting any of the benefit. All right, let's go to the motherboard. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here. I did two full videos on best motherboards for Ryzen 5000. I'm gonna put them up in the card. You can check them out. I am gonna pull off the best Price to performance, B550 board in there, the one I was raving about. At the time, it was $95 to $105. Right now, as of the time of this video, it's selling for $89. If you don't run out and buy one of these things, you're, you're crazy, unless you're gonna get something super high end for some reason. This motherboard has really good audio, ALC 1200 codec on it. Yes, it doesn't come with Wi-Fi, but you don't need to get Wi-Fi on the motherboard. Spend 12 bucks and get a USB Wi-Fi Bluetooth dongle. If you do want to go up the ladder, check out my video. I give you some other options. Very quickly, I would recommend uh, you replace the Ray Stealth cooler, as I said earlier in the video. Right now, at least 19 bucks, 20 bucks, will get you the Deep Cool Gamex 400, the V2, which has the screw-in mount. It doesn't use the clip-ins; it uses the screw-in mount. It has better mounting pressure. This cooler is pretty much everything that you're gonna need to replace the stock cooler and give yourself quite a bit of headroom for Precision Boost Overdrive to take advantage of. Of course, if you don't like the gamics, you don't like the blue light or whatever, you can go with the Hyper 212, any of the variants are fine, or the id cooling from my best Ryzen 5000 cooling video for the budget and mid-range mid level. You could go up as well. I'm not gonna discourage you from getting a higher end cooler. The Ryzen chips will typically, will take advantage of additional cooling headroom, especially with Precision Boost Overdrive. So it's not wasted necessarily. I just don't necessarily think it's, it's uh, cost effective at this range. I think for 20 bucks, this gets you what you need. And for a build like this, I wouldn't, in terms of a, a, an SSD, I wouldn't get less than a terabyte of space. I don't know why you'd go smaller than that. And we're gonna go today with the best price to performance gaming SSD in the Silicon Power A60. 
Now, I believe this is only available in the US still. So if you're one of my, I think 50% of my audience is outside the US, if that's the case for you, look for the Kingston A2000, which typically takes the uh, the, the Silicon Power A60's place in, in other markets as, as being one of the cheaper price to performance drives. Um, Again, if you haven't seen my series on best gaming SSDs, I'm gonna put that up in the card as well. You can take a look at that, get more information about why this is the best. Okay, power supplies. The other thing that I keep getting questions about is what are the power supplies that I should be buying for my Ryzen 5 5600X and, and above builds? Now, power requirements are always gonna be dependent on all the components you put into your build. It's not like there's just one power supply rating or watt size uh, or wattage rather for whatever build you want. That being said, the build that we're doing today, which is a Ryzen 5 5600X with either uh, an NVIDIA uh, 3070 or an AMD 6800 series card, I would go with the Neo Eco Gold Zen 600 watt power supply. You want to get a power supply that number one, I would go gold rated or better just for the efficiency. Number two, I, you want 600 watts for this build. The, the draw on this build is just under 400. What I like to do is I take the total system draw and then I add 50%. So the total system draws about 400 watts for this system. I'm going to add Cut that in half and add it to the end. So that's gonna give us 400 plus 200 is 600. I know math is hard, right? And I would make sure that you're getting a high quality power supply. So Linus Tech Tips, PSU Cultist list. I know that's like a real thing, right? PSU Cultist. They list out all the power supplies in different tiers. You wanna get one in tier A or tier B for a Ryzen, for this kind of build where you have a high-end graphics card and a high-end processor. If you're gonna build just kind of a low-end budget rig like a Ryzen 3 3100 and you know, a GTX 1650, you can drop down to the, the C category on there. I don't have a problem with that. But for this build, I think we wanna get one from the A or B tier. And I'll include a link to their list down in the description. You can always Google it as well. Finally, we're gonna encase this whole thing in the Montec X1 one of my best budget gaming cases. If you haven't seen that video again, look in the card. This I think is a really fantastic option. It is actually tempered glass uh, on the side. There are some drawbacks with this case, but none that are gonna, I really think impact you. Do note, however, that some of the Nvidia cards are so long that they will not fit in a lot of the ATX cases. So make sure to check your case clearance and your graphics card before you buy the two. Otherwise you might find that you have a graphics card that won't fit in the case. I really like this case. It's, uh, it's, I think it's pretty, it's got great airflow. I, I love that uh, Amazon's actually suggesting to me a couple of things that might be good as well. So the, the Montec fighter, this is fine. Uh, comes with four uh, RGB rainbow LED rather fans installed uh, with it $56. It's a, it's a good case. And then the other one that it suggested is the Roswell ATX. The only thing I don't like about this is it's got a tinted side panel to it. Um, but otherwise, it's a great airflow case. Comes with the four blue LED fans to it. $64. These cases are, it's really hard to beat for that price. Okay, that's going to do it for the best price to performance Ryzen 5600X build. Let me know what you think of the build in the down in the comments. If you would get something else, if you get different kinds of parts, uh, if there's something you feel like I missed or overlooked, please down in the comments, let's have a great discussion about it. Remember to like the video if you got value out of it. Subscribe for more content. Next we're up, we're probably gonna be doing a, a Ryzen 5900X uh, video editing and, and workstation build with some gaming uses in it. So stay tuned for that. I know we've got a lot of video editors out there. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next one, won't we?